Hello friends, this video on electrochemistry part 35 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will go through a topic called corrosion. So what is corrosion? It is gradual destruction of materials by chemical reaction within environment. It is a photochemical oxidation of metal. So it is electrochemical oxidation of metals in presence of oxygen. Let me write once again. It is nothing but gradual destruction of material by chemical reaction and this chemical reaction happens in environment on its own. This doesn't happen in the labs, it happen in, I mean, they do happen in lab also but they happen in environment. Right? It's electrochemical oxidation of metal. Right? Electrochemical oxidation of metal. Rusting of iron, if you see, is one good example of corrosion. Right? So it, this corrosion it slowly coats the surface of the metallic object with oxides. For example, iron it slowly coats with oxide. This is Fe2O3, whatever you see, right? Rusting of iron, tarnishing of silver, in the copper uh, object you see the green coating comes, they are all examples of corrosion. And there are huge, huge damage to the economy. The buildings, the bridge, the ships, they all got damaged because of this. Huge money is wasted every year because of this. And huge life is also in risk because the bridge is weak, people may die, the bridge may collapse. Right? So if you see, in corrosion, generally the metal oxide is formed by the loss of electron to oxygen. You see, metal oxide formed by loss of electron to oxygen and they form oxide. Right? For example, corrosion of iron, iron, I'll take the example of corrosion of iron, it happens in the presence of water and oxygen. I remember we have done an experiment where we have kept, uh, we have taken three test tubes. In one test tube we have uh, kept only water and uh, iron and we have sealed that with uh, some oil. So that had only water. In one test tube we just kept only oxygen and in one test tube we kept oxygen and water with nails and we saw that only the one which had both oxygen and water got corroded. The other were not corroded. So that means oxygen and water both are required for corrosion. If you see the oxidation reaction, right? It is the iron, this is the iron, this is my iron, Fe, right? Fe will become Fe2 plus in the aqueous mode. So the oxidation happens, right? And this Fe2 plus actually, if you see, it will react further to become with oxygen, Fe2 plus, it forms Fe2O3. And that is my rust. See, Fe iron will lose electron to form Fe2 plus. So that is the oxidation reaction. Correct? If you talk about reduction reaction, the oxygen will react with H plus and form water. See, this is the water. Water will have this H plus and OH minus. So we have this electrons here. This electron, correct? and this H plus, correct, and this oxygen from air, it's, it's air here, oxygen. So these three things will combine and the reaction will be oxygen plus 4 H plus plus 4 electron, 2 electron, one more oxidation will happen, will give 2 more electron, it will form 2 H2. And for this, if you see, the E is 1.23 volt, that means it is a spontaneous reaction. Right? Spontaneous reaction. If we talk about the oxidation, oxidation reaction Fe gives Fe 2 plus plus 4 electron, sorry, 2 electron actually, 2 electrons. Yeah. For this, the E is minus 0.44 and this is the E reduction, but this is the oxidation reaction. If we talk about the E oxidation, that will become plus 0.44. That means that is also a spontaneous reaction. So both are spontaneous reaction. Reaction 1, reaction 2, both are spontaneous reaction that can happen on their own in the nature.
correct so this is oxidation at anode you can say and this is at cathode you can say reduction reaction correct so if you add these two reactions you'll see that you are getting fe2o3 right this is my fe2o3 again this also reacts with oxygen to get fe 3 once you get fe 2 plus you can easily get fe 2 3 when it reacts with oxygen correct so the ferrous ions whatever you have seen right is further oxidized to become ferric ions and that is called rust this is called rust correct so if you see the this two reaction if you want to find the overall reaction let me write here if you join the reaction what you get is and this is this part when it reacts with oxygen here O2 and then 4H plus electro electro cancer both side it gives Fe2 plus and water correct so that is the reaction we have so you want yeah correct this is the reaction we have now this Fe2 plus will be further oxidized become to ferric and that is my rust. Correct. Let's see how can we prevent the corrosion. We can prevent the corrosion because corrosion is required to be prevented. It, you can save a lot of money by preventing corrosion. You can save life also by preventing corrosion. It is something which is not desirable. The first way is you can just coat the metallic surface with paint. Right. First is you do a paint coating but that is costly if you have a big ship paint it costs right second thing is instead of uh, coating with paint you can uh, coat with metallic surface coat with uh, with metallic surface for uh, the metals which are not reacting for example zinc aluminium right you can coat with this other metals which are inert to corrosion and this you can do using electroplating we have seen that the third is the electrochemical method that is called sacrificial electrode and this is an example of sacrificial method right this is the electrochemical method right using the electro chemical method so if you see here what we do in the ships we apply small rod of magnesium or zinc right magnesium or zinc we apply here in this iron if you assume that the whole ship is of iron we apply this and with that I'll show you the magic what happens so in this what will happen these magnesium or zinc which we applied they will corrode itself they itself will corrode but they will save iron to corrode right because they are more reactive metal so they will act as anode and they will be oxidized for example in this case what will happen magnesium will become mg2 plus it will take the two electron so if you see here the reduction is minus 2.34 but this is oxidation reaction so oxidation uh, E will be 2.34 volt that is it is a spontaneous reaction correct iron being less reactive they will act as cathode and in iron instead of iron getting oxidized because that will iron will act as my cathode and this will act as anode Correct. So it, at anode, what will happen is this is my anode, this is that cathode. My oxygen will react with water, it will take four electrons and form 4OH minus. So with this, the iron will be prevented from rusting. But again, see this is the example. This is an example of a zinc that was placed in a ship. This is the same thing which you are seeing here this is the same thing the real one actually and if you see this zinc has got 
corroded it. Correct? Right? It has saved iron. And that is how it works. But again, this get corroded and then you have to replace this from time to time. But that saves money, right? Because you are saving from the, the whole ship to get corroded. This is a very good method that is used, sacrificial method. The last topic for this chapter we will understand is hydrogen economy. So this is to save our earth. See, currently we use more fossil fuels for to produce electricity, to run our cars. Uh, everywhere we use petrol, coal, a lot of fossil fuel is used, right? And these fossil fuels, carbon dioxide is produced. That is the output. All these fossil fuels which we use, like coal, petrol, right? This gives carbon dioxide as output. And this carbon dioxide leads to pollution, right? It also leads to greenhouse effect, right? And with this, the earth temperature is increasing. With this, the earth temperature is increasing. And with this, what is happening? The ice is melting. And there is ice melting, the low lying areas, the coastal areas, low lying areas or low lying coastal area are getting flooded. Correct. Here, hydrogen fuel cell, which we have seen, it provides a better alternative. Because here the output is only water, which you can actually use it. In fact, the fuel cell which I just discussed, there the output is water that was used for uh, a Russian uh, spacecraft mission Apollo, and the water output which it was uh, the output of water was being used by the astronauts for drinking. Correct. So and also here this right this can be a renewable non-polluting source of energy. This fuel cell. And the vision, the vision to use more of hydrogen gas fuel cells to produce uh, electricity and less of fossil fuel to have a non-polluting earth. That vision is called hydrogen. That is the vision. That is the vision to have a non-polluting earth. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.